Prince Moore, in the name of Allah, most merciful and gracious. Omar ibn Sa'id, son of Muhammad, son of Ali, son of Othman, son of Ishhab el Falani. Translation of the life of Omar ibn Sa'id. And we're going to point out where they start adding in falsehood and all of that. Do you discern anything trifling in creation? Bring back your thoughts. Do you see anything worthless? Recall your vision in earnest. Turn your eyes inward, for it is diseased. He knew them Christians was looking outward. Allah has adorned the heavens and the world with lamps. Those are prophets. They was made as missiles for the devil and given us for them a grievous punishment. And to those who have disbelieved their Allah, the punishment of hell, thus of body, moreover associated with them, shall hear a boiling cauldron, and what is cast therein may fully represent those who suffer under the anger of Allah. Ask them if a prophet has not been sent unto them. They say, yes, a prophet has come to us, but we have lied to him. We said God has sent us nothing. I am Omar ibn Sa'id, son of Sa'id. I was born in Futjur, between the two rivers. I sought knowledge under the instruction of a sheikh called Muhammad Sa'id, my own brother, and sheikh Solomon Kimba, and sheikh Gabriel Abdul. I continued my studies 25 years, then returned to my home. So he left Fula. And that's what I mean. They said that he was taken from Fula, but all he said was he was born in Fula, but he showed that he left. So I'm saying he was captured at Moro Castle. So, yeah, he was under the education of Sheikh Gabriel Abdul. I continued my studies for 25 years, five on the left, two on the right, then returned to my home where I remained six years. Then there came to my place a large army who killed many men and took me and brought me to a great sea and sold me to the hands of the Christians who bound me and sent me on a board of ship and sailed upon the great sea a month and a half. When we came to a place called Charleston. So I feel they captured him when he was in the Moros Castle because he's a Prince Moor. And they said that he was taken from Fula, but he said he was born. He went out and did his studies and all that. So he was moving around because the empire was big. They sold me to a small, weak and wicked man called John, a complete infidel who had no fear of Allah at all. Now I'm a small man and unable to do hard work. So I fled from the hands of Johnson and afterwards came to a place called Fayetteville. There I saw some great houses and it got some parentheses churches on the new moon. Remember, he was an astrologer on the new moon. I went into the church to pray. Remember, Noble Drali said when a moor goes into a church, a lad saw me and rode off to the place of his father and informed him that a black man in the church was praying. Now, here we go. We're getting into the European. He put black. The European put black. They took me and made me go with them. They took me and made me go with them for 12 miles where they put me into a great house from which I could not go out. I continued in the great house of which in the Christian language they call jail. 16 days and nights. One Friday, the jailer came and opened the door of the house. I saw a great many men, all Christians, two of whom called out, What is your name? Is it Omar or Saeed? They knew who he was. I did not understand their Christian languages. A man called Bob Mumford took me out of the jail, and I was very well pleased to go with him to other places. And this is another thing. We'll show where the Europeans start adding in BS, man, like, oh, I love these people and all this craziness. Jim Owens, son-in-law of Mumford, who married his daughter Betsy, asked if I was willing to go to a place called Bladen. I said, yes, I was willing and went with them and have remained in the place of Jim Owens. So they mentioned Owens, the governor of Owens. Now you're about to watch the insert. 
O ye people of North Carolina, O ye people of South Carolina, O ye people of America, all of you, have you among you any two such men as Jim Owens and John Owens? These men are good men. What food they eat, they give to me to eat. As they clothe themselves, they clothe me. They permit me to read the gospel of God, our Lord and Savior and King. According to my power, I open my heart as a great light to receive the true way of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Bullshit. You know what they was trying to do? They wanted a... They wanted an adept Muslim that they could tell the world they converted into Christianity. And that's what they were saying. But then right after that, he turns around and says how he prayed to Allah every day. He said, I gave alms every year, gold, silver, seeds, cattle, grain, rice, wheat and barley and gave tithes of all the above named things. I went every year to the holy war against the infidel. He was fighting against the Christians and they're saying that he accepted Jesus. Man. I went on pilgrimage to Mecca as all did who were able. My father had six sons and five daughters and my brother had three sons. I have been in the country of the Christians 24 years, written A.D. 1831. O people of North Carolina, O people of South Carolina, all the people in America. The first son of Jim Owens is called Thomas. Then sister is called Martha. Jim Owens and his wife Betsy have two sons and five daughters. Their names are Tom and John, Mercy Miriam, Sophia, Margaret, and Eliza. This family is a very nice family. So look, brothers and sisters, I've been telling you all, Prince Moore, Uncle Moore, North Carolina. And they directly say Prince Moro. And Moro's connected to the three Magi Moors in Havana, Cuba, the Moro Castle. Because we didn't even get into his other transcript where he said many faces will be turned white and black and they will have to raise from the dead and run this race. Y'all are sleeping, man. I got to write them on. Just pull the whole page down, bro. Y'all are sleeping. Noble Drew Ali could come and knock on y'all's door and y'all walk right by him just like this brother said. Y'all, but he didn't send nothing. The law didn't send anything. But I have Moors who study and they want to know. Like a brother, the more Islam to you, brother, he asked, what's the connection between Omar Ibn Said and Aziz Said? Well, just listen, Said, this brother said he was from the bloodline of Ali, Muhammad, Said, and then you have Aziz Said. And he followed out what Noble Drew Ali said, because he said, don't put shrines on stuff, because he knew the shrines was put on top of the six imams cemeteries. There's six of them. Noble Drew Ali's the seventh. So that's the tie. And if you look at this brother and go look at Aziz Saeed, you see the same facial. They, It's just Aziz Saeed just barely had that Moorish blood in him or something. But they both are of the Saeed, which Aziz Saeed became the first king of Saudi Arabia. And I feel he may have sold out after Noble Drali passed because we have him on the American destroyer ship and he's beaten with U.S. He's meeting with. Farik Ali, he's meeting with Haile Selassie. He's just meeting with all the all the main people, but he just didn't look out. Why didn't he look out for the Moors? He knew U.S. was banging on the Moors crazy. So why didn't he say on the ship, hey, man, why don't y'all lay off of the Moors over there? In the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Moro Castle, Havana, Cuba, 1899. This is Moro Castle. Uncle Moore, Prince Moore. You see the flag, right? Now watch. They take that they take that flag down and then they put up their banner. That's when Moro Castle was captured in Havana, Cuba. And Prince Moore, look, this is my thesis, my theory. They took him to North Carolina, Prince Moro, and this Moro Castle was to protect from colonizers getting this into... This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov. The Moro Castle was to keep colonizers getting into Northern Hemisphere of America because Central America was the main hub for America. So when Nobudrali went to the Pan-American Conference... 
He showed proof that he was bloodline of the ones who they captured in Central America. So, of course, they put the headdress on because he was the prince. He was Prince Moro. But look, Omar Ibn Said, who's known as Prince Moore or Prince Moro, in his transcripts, he has the bloodline of him being bloodline to Ali, which nobody Ali knew he was the bloodline. Prince Moro, Uncle Moore from Havana, Cuba. Nobody Ali went there. But look, check this out. I was reading through the telegrams while the convention or while the Pan American Conference was going on, right? People from Havana was sending notes treating United States real bad. They was like, man, you left your boat on our harbor. You know what I'm saying? And it's getting ready to sink. Are you going to come get it? And they left it there. And United States president has never went back to Havana at any convention after Nobudra Ali went there. They let the boat sink there. In Havana, Cuba, they had a ceremony um, celebrating the sinking of the U.S. ship that they left abandoned there. So maybe something happened when Nobudra Ali was there and they straight left. But I do know that this Moro castle connects with Prince Moro which was the bloodline of Ali, Nobujar Ali's Circle 7 is, I mean, I done said all this, brothers, sisters. We finding this out, though, man. I just wish I would do something with it. Y'all need to start contacting Central America and letting them know that y'all are awake instead of trying to hit up uh, the ICC and all that. Straight up. Start hitting up Central America and letting them know you awake, man, because they know who Nobu Jirali is. I feel they crowned him Prince with the headdress because he proved he was bloodline of Prince Moro, who was in the Moro Castle. So that Moro Castle, that was Nobu Jirali's, man. Go look at the Moro Castle in Havana, Cuba. It was made to keep the colonizers in. That's the way you had to go through the Moro Castle to get to North America. Central America, man, Nobu Ali was a genius.